Two, we'll call the meeting to order and start with the roll, please. Sure, Todd Barker. Here. Who louder? Here. Jim Bencura. Here. Bill Vernon. Here. Um, I'm going to begin with an opening statement. The Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial board appointed by the Mayor and City Council. The board is not part of the City Administration and is governed by both City and State Codes and Ordinances. The board is made up of five members, it is currently four and we have a vacant seat. The Chair, myself, cannot make a motion but has a vote. There must be three affirmative votes to pass. No motion made by the board will be the same as denial. If all members are not present, petitioners have the right to ask for their case to be tabled until the next scheduled meeting, but there is no guarantee of a full board next month. The board is empowered to vary the regulations of the zoning ordinance in harmony with its general purpose and intent, where the board makes <coughs> finding a fact that there are practical <clears throat> difficulties or unnecessary hardships that may prevent carrying out the literal provisions of the ordinance. The board reviews conditional use requests and considers the following. Is the requested use consistent with the intent and purpose of the ordinance and with the comprehensive plan? Will the use have a substantial adverse effect upon adjacent property and the character of the neighborhood? And will the proposed use be compatible with the immediate neighborhood? The board also reviews variance requests. A variance request should only be granted if the petitioner establishes that an unnecessary hardship will result if zoning regulations are enforced. There are criteria which was in your application. A general rule of thumb is that a variance should prevent a hardship and does not, gr not grant a special privilege not available to other landowners in a similar situation. Unnecessary hardship means the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return if used only for the purpose allowed in that zone. The issue in question is due to unique circumstances and not central conditions of the neighborhood. The hardship must not be self-created and the use authorized by the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. As a board of the city, all testimony is welcome. Decisions are based on facts and evidence allowed under city code. I will introduce your case and the city staff will provide details regarding the request. The petitioner will then be asked to come forward to this podium and use that microphone and state your name and address for the record. And then you will allow, be allowed to present anything additional that you would like to in your case. Please uh, proceed, forgive me. If the proceedings become lengthy, testimony may be limited to new facts or evidence not already presented. Objectors will then have an opportunity to address the board. Objectors shall state their name and address for the record and state objections or concerns. I will then call for any board questions or discussion. Final summaries and additional comments may they then take place. Based on a motion and a second, I will then call for a vote. If your variance is approved, please understand that you may still have to comply with other regulations and codes, such as applicable building codes. Please visit with Development Services Department official for any clarifications. Today we have four members present. Uh, I just want to clarify on voting that it does take three votes to approve a request. If there, I do not have uh, the ability to make a motion, but I have a vote. If the vote is split two to two, then that would be the same as denial. And we have an open seat due to the recent death of a dear friend and colleague of all of ours, Nancy Lee Zizi. And I just want to state for the record that uh, many of you knew her very well, and she was a really great, uh, great person and civil servant for this community. So she'll be missed. That being said, as we get on with the business at hand, if there is anyone that would like to have their request tabled, they would be permitted to do so. Seeing none, we'll... Uh, any, I will ask for a motion for approval of the minutes or any edits. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I have reviewed the minutes of our last meeting and would uh, motion that we approve these as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. With that, uh, we'll begin. Thank you. Good afternoon. Our uh, our first item is a is actually a two part request for conditional use approval and also a, an accompanying parking variance. Uh, this is a request by TWG Development 
for uh, vacant properties at 5200 to 5300 16th Avenue Southwest. And um, here's our, our location map and the details of the project. It, this is a proposal to build 152 um, affordable multifamily dwelling units. Uh, and this would be within two four-story buildings on the property. Uh, they would also have two six bay and two 12 bay detached parking garages. Uh, the site's a little less than five acres. Uh, parking required by code would be 335. They're proposing to provide 214. Um, stormwater, is, stormwater detention will be provided uh, with a regional basin off site. And uh, this project is going to go before the Iowa Finance Authority for a, a tax credit request. Uh, we can see the, the zoning is C3, therefore the conditional use request for ground floor residential units. Uh, we have a lot of multifamily zoning around the site and kind of a mix of commercial and industrial uses on the south side of 16th Avenue. And here's just another closer up aerial view of the property and the, the frontage road coming off of 16th Avenue. And then this would be the, the proposed layout with the two buildings, this L-shaped building and then a, another one here. And then you've got your 12, 12 bay garages tucked behind and then a couple of additional garages and, and more off street parking to the west. And they've provided a landscape plan showing the, the landscape buffer yard to the north and uh, screening plantings to the east. And uh, we've also been given a rendering of the buildings. Uh, you see the, the four-story building there. So with that, I would uh, turn it back to the board. Thank you, Dave. Is the applicant present? If you would come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sam Rogers. I'm with TWG Development out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Address is 333 North of Pennsylvania Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46204. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like, I'm going to ask for your understanding. Uh, the, the combination of six inches of snow and 20 degree weather last week to 70 today is uh, doing a number on my sinuses. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the board for their, for their time and consideration today. Uh, TWG is uh, very excited about this project, as well as very, very excited and very bullish about the city of Cedar Rapids as well. We, um, we have, we last, last, last November completed the, 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 excuse me, the redevelopment of the, of the Commonwealth Apartments. I just, 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 just down the street here, as well as the, as well as uh, submitting a, a a a a nine percent tax credit project as well uh, down on diagonal drive which we should hear about in about 10 days we're excited about that and very very hopeful uh, uh, some details on the project like you said it's 152 units a 76 one bedroom 76 two bedrooms 100 percent affordable um, as far as the conditional use use piece um, obviously uh, we feel that the use um, um, is very similar to out of the surrounding uh, multifamily developments that are already there, there that all have the first floor, uh, for, excuse me, the first floor uh, dwelling units. Sorry, excuse me. And then as far as the parking variance, can I go ahead and talk about the parking variance or should I I'll wait for, okay. As far as the parking variance, uh, 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 TWG development, uh, since its inception in 2007, has completed almost almost the 50 affordable projects with, uh, with, with the 2,000 units and our average parking count is basically 1.1 per unit across across all of our uh, developments. Obviously, we're not asking for that low of a number, but uh, by and large, our experience on the affordable side is that is that is that to by and large, uh, it's basically one car per for essentially unit or household is what we see. I see across the board. Um, <clears throat> um, additionally, uh, with the with the with the with the uh, parking reductions allowed by code, uh, that would get us down to 263 units. So the, so the, sorry, I, sorry, 263 spaces. So, so the actual variance that we're asking for, for is only about 50 spaces overall, based on that. 
And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, thank you. Any questions from the board? Are the uh, spaces that are included in the two buildings, the uh, garages, are those considered parking spaces for purposes of the ordinance? Yeah, yeah they count. So they're part of the 202 that they will provide? Yes. So the shortfall is 133, roughly, or so. Uh, sir, I believe the overall count is actually is actually a 214 on our on our on our latest site plan. Can I uh, correct correct two fourteen two fourteen? Does the management application process limit the number of vehicles the tenants can have on the property? Um, it can. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to. And is it permit parking? Like a unit is given a permit for yes. their vehicle? Yes. Where's the overflow go? Is it out in the street? The overflow. There wouldn't be parking allowed on, on 16th, no. No. Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any additional questions? Yeah, I have another one. I, you yes. talked about having several other units. Um, are, do they have a situation like that where they have no off-street parking like this doesn't? Most of them do. Most of them do have oh, off-street parking. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not following your question. I apologize. Well, do other ones, do your other ones have off-street parking around? Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, I, th mean I think that's a real, actual, I think that's, I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, so you mean outside of the actual parking yeah. lot itself? Yeah. No. So you're saying your other developments don't have off-street parking just like this one doesn't? No. Uh, I would say about 80 85% don't. What other situations have you guys had that have been in like a self-contained unit and let's say there's 220 cars to fit into a 214 car or 250 cars or something i mean just the market or the project driven somebody just doesn't get a permit for a car which is just business driven yeah in large part that's probably the case here uh, we have seen variance requests for some of the uh, affordable housing uh, projects. Uh, we see them fairly uh, consistently for like senior housing, independent living. Um, in this particular case, uh, Mr. Rogers did point out that the shortfall really isn't the 335 because the city affords you reductions based on providing, uh, for example, a bike rack that holds five bikes, you get a one parking space reduction for each one of those. You get, a, uh, I think, a 5% reduction if you're on a transit route close to a bus stop and some other things. So that 335 uh, minimum required didn't take into consideration those reductions that are afforded through the zoning ordinance. So uh, as he stated, the reduction really is probably more like 60 spaces instead of 116 or something like that. But yeah i mean it's it's pretty self-regulating uh the way we've always looked at parking is if you don't have enough parking it's going to hurt your business if we if has the city had a project where a variance has been granted it's self-contained and the issue comes back to the city in some form or fashion I think the board historically, if you were to grant this variance or in the past variances like that, you've put a condition on it that basically stated if parking becomes a problem, they need to come back to the board and address that, how they're going to resolve that parking issue. Which but what is, problem would come back to the city? Um, if, if they were parking on that frontage road, this is a frontage road that runs along the front of the property. This is actually 16th Avenue down here. If people were parking along that frontage road, because there wasn't any place to park on site, 
uh, people you know that live in the apartments uh, next door who use that frontage road or who use the convenience store over here to come out to 16th Avenue if they started complaining then then we would have to address it they're not allowed to park on that frontage road are they no they are not I um, first of all applaud your efforts in providing affordable housing I have worked with a lot of low-income housing tax credit projects and know that there is a big need for this in our town I know that a lot of the tenants probably use bikes probably take the bus system and I love that this is on the bus route and I know that was strategic yes. um, so I would be agreeable to the request I would like to see some type of and I'm not sure how this is ever enforced and probably can't be very unless there's complaints but some type of um, you don't issue more parking permits than there are spots in this lot otherwise it's gonna well, force people to find other off-street parking understood and if what about the condition that if parking does become a problem like it's it's on the frontage road or something then you and the city can work things out or well 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 I would say that obviously obviously I will have we'll have we'll have a daily on-site management so if that ever becomes a problem our, our on-site property manager will get those off the road 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 ASAP um, I would say it would probably if it becomes an issue which we don't think it will based on our experience um, as we would have to have to figure out some kind of a parking agreement with somebody close by mm -hmm. uh, in order to take care of that overflow parking so could we put that as a condition I mean, in other words I know you're talking about a restriction not only so many permits but if you just put the restriction that if it becomes an issue then it will need to be addressed some mutual agreement with the city in that way say they issue for example more permits but the parking lots not parking is not an issue mm -hmm. even though more permits because people use them at different times or something yeah is that okay with you or you say that we have to have the I, I have to have the agreement a day one or is, or is it something that if, no if, if it should become an issue we come back it would well, be su subject to the fine. condition that if parking becomes a problem and the city gets involved or complaints that you need to work with the city to find a amicable resolution I would be happy to do that Mm -hmm. is that a almost a motion yeah mr. That, uh, mr chairman i would move that uh, the conditional use 024306-2017 be granted as requested subject to the condition that if parking becomes a problem uh, then uh, the uh, applicant will work with the city to look for options of resolution so hold, just a second let's do these one by one then let's do the first request 024306 which is just the dwelling unit on ground floor and then let's do them the second one even though we're hearing them both together any motion for 024306 yeah I'll make my motion without condition that be granted Oh, second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, that conditional use request passes. And now on 024410. 02, 0217, the variance, I'd make it subject to the condition that if parking becomes an issue, that the applicant and the city, or the applicant will work with the city to find a, a uh, parking solution mutually agreeable with the city citing uh, unique circumstances uh, and compatibility in the area second motion and a second any further discussion there's none all in favor say aye aye, aye. oppose same sign motion carries case, you can you follow up much. with uh, building services thank you and whenever you're ready for the next Our second uh, conditional use request 
Uh, is for 4625 Tower Terrace Road, made by HJ, HJD Investments. And uh, this will be familiar. This was approved recently for uh, an expansion of the Twisters site to uh, include an additional building and outdoor volleyball. And today's request is, uh, is a request for outdoor alcohol service for a... Uh, a small bar that would be in the outdoor volleyball area. Um, so this uh, this outdoor service area would be just a little over 3,000 square feet in size, and it should seat about 101 patrons. Uh, overall parking for the entire facility, it's required 248, and they're providing 249 spaces. So this, this was the site plan that was uh, recently approved to add, add an, an additional building here, indoor soccer and volleyball, a, a second building here for indoor volleyball, and then th these were outdoor volleyball courts. And uh, today's request would be centered about in the middle there with this uh, tiki bar concept, and then there's uh, there's also uh, changing rooms, restrooms associated with it. I think we have a closer view. Nope, oh, nope. But the, these are uh, these are out. Uh, these are tables around this tiki bar. So basically, that is the request. And with that, I'll turn it back to the board. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Yeah. If you would come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. My name is John Mangold. I live at 2916 Terrapin Drive in Hiawatha. And what would you care to add to your case? Uh, we're just really excited about the project. I think we'll bring a lot of people out there, and we're trying to get a lot of sporting uh, activity all in the same area, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any other questions or comments? I just have one question. Um, on page, I guess, two of the CPC application, it states staff comments. Um, saying that the proposed conditional use has the potential to adversely affect these properties due to noise, lighting, and hours of operation. How late would the hours be? Uh, it would be until 10 o'clock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've spoken with the neighbors, and to give you a kind of a layout of our property, uh, we're centered between a wooded area before the house next to us, and then behind us is another wooded area until the other house. And the person that lives on the corner that would probably be the most effective, as she states, it is really nice to have lights because she's scared at night when her husband's at work in the middle of the night. So she's very happy with it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve conditional use two four four. 38-2017 um, subject to just the um, recommended conditions noted by CPC. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You. you can follow up with building services. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Okay, the next item is a uh, request uh, for a variance uh, for a new detached uh, 32 by 40 foot uh, accessory structure, a garage that exceeds the height of the house. Uh, the proposed garage would be uh, 17 feet 4 inches in lieu of the 13 feet 9 inches uh, with, uh, for the existing house. Uh, the property is zoned R2 single family residential. It's located at uh, 2400 uh, Fruitland Boulevard. Uh, 
Um, the request is being made by uh, Keith Hart uh, Hartney. Uh, as I mentioned, the garage uh, will be uh, nine, 960 square feet. Um, the garage will be actually located further off the street back behind the house further than the existing garage which will be removed. Uh, like I said, the house is uh, 13 and a half feet high. The garage would be 17 fo uh, foot 4 inches. Uh, they will be constructing the garage with matching exterior uh, materials of the existing home. This is the uh, aerial view of the site. This is Fruitland Boulevard. This is the existing garage with the house. You can see there's are narrower lots, but very long and deep. Uh, based on the site visit I went by, the street is a little lower than the house, so the lots kind of go uphill. So by positioning the garage a little further back, it really you wouldn't really notice, I don't think, the height difference you know, based on the elevation change. This is just a uh, aerial foot or a street view. Uh, the house, you can see the existing garage back there. Um, this is a site plan that was provided. Uh, here's the house. The garage, the existing garage, sits at this location, so this garage would actually be back kind of behind where the existing garage sits today. And then this is just kind of a, a conceptual sketch that the applicant provided showing the, the difference uh, uh, somewhat uh, in, the, in the two structures. This would be the new garage and this would be the house, so there would be a little bit uh, difference, about four foot, a little under four foot in height difference. Uh, I have nothing more to add, and I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. Is the applicant present? If you would come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Kenneth Hartney, 2400 Fruitland Boulevard, Southwest. And what would you care to add to your application? Well, I case? just simply want to build a bigger garage to store stuff in it. I got three vehicles, three Harleys. The ride and lawnmower, the mower's outside, vehicles are parked in the street, one got rear-ended in the street, I need somewhere to store the stuff. The driveways are narrow, so you can't put it all in the driveway. Just simply want somewhere to store, store stuff. Any other questions from the board? How many square feet are in the house? Oh, I think it's about 900. About the same size? As yeah. The when I heard you said 32 by 40, it's 30 by 40. So, I mean, it don't make much difference at all, but. Just so we are clear, because we had, it was stated a couple different times, 32 by 40 or 32 30. by 30? 30 by 40 30 by 40 so 1200 square feet because the lots are 50 wide so that gives me my room on both sides okay so does that need to be an additional variance for the size no they can go over the 900 square foot provided they provide the same exterior type materials okay. on the garage. I just wanted to clarify. Outside. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And if they're not higher, but this right. is the variance. This is the height variance. The height. Right. Can you notice the four feet from the street or? I, I wouldn't. Yeah. But you get one of them neighbors, they might just, you know, it might be a big deal to them. Any uh, neighbors talk to you about anything? No. Yeah, and the signs were posted and we've not received any uh, communication from any neighbors are there any objectors present today there are none mr. chairman I move that we approve uh, variance number 024414-2017 uh, subject to conditions listed by the development staff uh, citing unique circumstances thank you Motion and a second. Any further discussion? There's none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with building services on next steps. Thank you. Okay, the next item is variance uh, uh, 024419 2017. This is for property at 1629 C Avenue Northwest. 
This is consideration of a variance request for a reduced front yard setback for a covered front porch addition in the R3 uh, single family zoning district is uh, requested by Christopher Orton. This is a location map showing the property, uh, B Avenue. Down here, the C2 area is the high V on uh, Johnson Avenue, so it gives you kind of a point of reference. And then this is uh, Roosevelt School uh, to the east of the site. Uh, the property, as I mentioned, is zoned R3. Uh, they're looking at a uh, requested setback of 15 uh, foot 4 inches in lieu of the uh, minimum required 25 foot. Uh, would point out that this setback would be consistent with other homes in the area. So in terms of uh, being contextual, it would be contextual with the houses uh, in that area. This is a uh, aerial photo showing the house. You can see the other houses in, along that block face are far less than the 25 feet uh, from today's standard. This is the house. What they're looking at doing actually is extending part of a room out into this uh, covered porch area and then opening up some of that porch as a covered porch to look more like that. This was a house that uh, he provided a photo of of what he's kind of attempting to do. Uh, this is the uh, site plans. This is the existing showing the full porch across the front. He would actually extend a room out into a portion of that and actually fill in this corner for that room. And then this part of the porch, uh, it would extend out a little further, but would be an open porch uh, with a roof over it. Uh, that's all I have, and I'd uh, turn it back over to the board. Thank you. Is the applicant present? If you could step forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Chris Wharton, and my address is 1629 C Avenue Northwest. And what would you like to add to your case? Um, just basically, we're just trying to update our house to kind of keep it within the time of it is, of the time that it was built. Um, there is a little bit of a difference from what it was to what I want to do. So basically, I'm just trying to keep it within what it was and not go too far out. And if that picture you can kind of see that I kind of use as a reference of what it's like, basically, we're going like a foot and a half farther into the setback. So that's really what I'm trying to do. Just update it and keep it. And I think you answered my question, but I just want to clarify for everyone, it's basically a foot and a half or say less than two feet further mm -hmm. than the existing. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Are there any objectors present? There are none. Any further questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve variance 024419 subject to the condition noted herein regarding the staff recommendation that it not be enclosed in the future. And I would cite um, not detrimental. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You all can right. follow up with the building services. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Next item on the agenda is uh, variance uh, 024448 2017. This is for property at 406th Street Southwest. Uh, this is con consideration of a variance request for on premise signage for illegal non conforming use in the RMF uh, 2 multifamily re residential zoning district as requested by JDN Properties LLC. This is a location map showing the uh, property. Uh, this is 3rd Avenue and 6th Street, 4th Avenue. This is a uh, neighborhood uh, tavern that was built in 1910. Uh, for whatever reason, it has a non-conforming zoning, uh, but it has always functioned as a tavern on the first floor, and then there's two apartments on the upper level. Uh, as I mentioned, it was built in uh, 1910. Uh, they're requesting uh, what we would allow as the maximum of signage for a non-conforming uh, commercial type use in the multifamily zoning district. 
uh, which would be three four by eight foot banner signs for a total of 96 square feet in signage. Uh, there would be no illumination uh, and the staff is recommending a condition that they would not be able to exceed that 96 square feet in the future and that they would not illuminate any of those sign signs. Um, this is just a close-up aerial of the property. Uh, you can see it uh, really doesn't have a lot of parking. It's just the way things were built back in, in that time period. This is looking from 6th Street. Uh, they do have some of the signage up. Uh, there's a banner sign behind the tree here. This sign on the roof was uh, the one that brought it to our attention, so we worked with the applicant. That sign is not allowed and is no longer there. Uh, and then they have uh, one of their banner signs on the uh, 4th Avenue side and then on the other side of the building they also have one. So uh, this really came to our attention when somebody complained about the roof sign. Uh, they had already put up the signs. They didn't realize that they needed permits. So we're working with them to um, get this variance. Uh, one of the things that was discussed was rezoning it. But not knowing, you know, what's going to happen in that area, it was part of the flood impacted area. And given the fact that it's a fairly predominantly residential neighborhood, we felt that the variance requests and keeping it a legal non-conforming use at this point would be better than to rezone it. Uh, and then if the bar went out of business, have a use there that would be even less desirable for the neighborhood. Uh, with that, I have nothing more to add, and I'll turn it over to the chair. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Could come forward, please. Hello, my name is David Rusty. I live at 402 6th Street, Southwest, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And what would you care to add to your case? I put a lot of effort into working with the neighborhood uh, around there. I've actually discussed with them. I, the biggest concern would have been illumination, and I had no intentions of illuminating it. Uh, at one time, I had an open and closed sign that was bright, that was blinking. Neighbor came over and complained about it. I took care of it so that it wouldn't be there. Um, I've lived near a tavern before, so I have really went out of my way to make an extra effort with my neighbors around there <laughs> because it's it's got to be very difficult to deal with a tavern that close by. And believe it or not, they, they bring me cookies. <laughs> so I, I think I'm winning them over as far as getting along with them well. I just want some basic signage. Uh, I took down everything, by the way, in the end, uh, because I wasn't quite sure how this all works. Um, immediately, I took down the, the upper First sign, time. and then the others have been recently taken down, too, until I get full approval of what you guys are willing to accept. And that, that's my question, is I just wanted to clarify, based on the pictures and the applications. Some of those are mock-ups, too. Those, aren't, those pictures okay. aren't totally... Uh, the signs but you would have your intention would be to have three total signs yes one on the the side where you would be heading uh north one on the side that you'd be heading south and then in the front okay uh you can't really see uh, either ones from a total angle until you're like right on the building and uh they've pretty much kind of been there for well three four years unknowingly uh but mm -hmm. uh, I've never had any complaints directly anyway about them. And the so, upper one was the only one I've ever had. A, and just so everyone's clear, those three signs would each be, it would be a total of 96 square feet, so 32 square feet per sign. They're yeah. the same size in yes, each location so and no additional signage. And like you just indicated, uh, no open There was sign. a request for the temporary banner for occasional events, uh, you know, St. Patty's Day, mm -hmm. uh, karaoke night or something like that but um nothing that's going to be hopefully a nuisance so and so Vern, can you clarify what is there any ability to do temporary they certainly could have temporary signage and if the board's okay with that we we could add that as a uh, part of the uh, uh variance uh, uh approval if you ch choose to approve this and I'm more than willing if anybody has an issue with it. I mean, they, I'll do something about it. If you guys don't like what's on the sign or something like that, just let me know. I just mainly want to have the name there, mm -hmm. uh, basically our hours, and maybe a couple of our uh, – we have a trivia contest on Tuesdays and uh, – what is it? Uh, a, 
a card game on Thursday. What do they call that? Euchre. Uh, something along those lines. Any other questions from the board? Are there any objectors present? There are none. I should know, but what? How does it work for temporary signage for others? They they would have to we would have to put that as a condition, or they would just be afforded whatever the current. Yeah, since this is a legal non-conforming use, I think we would want to formally say that they're allowed uh, uh, a temporary banner. Uh, obviously, they have to come in and get a permit for that. But because it's multifamily, not commercial, um, I think it's probably a good idea if the board chooses to to add that as part of the uh, the recommendation. Right. Thank you. Vote. And would that be one banner or three banners? One. One banner? Yeah. You'd just, probably put it up front. Yeah, or, just to kind of, you know, you're driving by looking for the event, and you're looking for the name, and you see, oh, there's the, the card, you know, event or whatever, and then they kind of just an extra point out. And we, we sponsor some, uh, uh, the shelter down the road and stuff like that for the animal shelter, and we put a banner up for that. I think they're called last chance, I believe. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve variance 024448 um, with the approval of one temporary banner signage and subject to the staff um, conditions regarding um, future signs not exceed the allowed square feet um, recommendation, and I would cite unique circumstances. I'm not following. Sorry. It just, and I just wanted to clarify for the second condition, did you also want to include shall not be illuminated? Oh, for sure, shall yeah. not be illuminated. Okay. We have a motion. Second. Motion and a second, any further discussion? There's none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, and you can follow up with staff for next steps. All right, thank you for your time. You're welcome, thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. Go ahead. All right, uh, the next item on the agenda is a request for a variance uh, for property. Uh, this is variance uh, 024455-2017. Uh, the location is uh, 2331 18th Street Southwest. Uh, this is a consideration of a variance request to waive the standards for a new 50 by 55 foot uh, single story uh, detached accessory structure, a garage in the R2 zoning district as requested by Patriot uh, Enterprises LLC. This is a location map showing the property. This is Wilson Avenue, 18th Street, which now goes all the way through to 16th Avenue. Uh, this is the uh, former Apache hose manufa manufacturing plant. Now I think there's a, a mix of contractor shops and other things in that facility. Uh, this is kind of an odd shaped parcel it has a uh, just a, about a 60 foot frontage it goes all the way back and then uh, is bounded by the red line uh, there's a single family home here that was carved out of that uh, some time ago there's an existing house with a garage at this location and they're looking at putting a, a larger garage here uh, the garage, since it does exceed the 900 square feet, uh, would need to meet the uh, requirement for the similar exterior finishes, and in this case, they wish not to do that. So that's the variance request. Uh, as I showed you, this is a, a large, irregular-shaped lot. Uh, it does have a creek drainage way to the north, uh, railroad tracks to the east, and then industrial zoning to the south. This is just a little closer-up view. Uh, the access into the property it's a garage with the house uh, this where it says vacant would be where the new garage would be constructed and this is just looking down that driveway into the property uh, this is uh, the you can see the garage in the house back here the 
new garage would be back behind this garage, uh, kind of tucked back in behind uh, two houses and garages. And then this is the site plan uh, that they provided. Again, the access in, there's two properties here, and then there's a house and a garage uh, that is part of this site. And then this would be where they locate would locate the new garage. Uh, with that, uh, I have nothing more to add, and I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. Is the applicant present? You could come forward, please, and state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Josh uh, Rao, 3133 Adirondack Drive, Northeast. And what would you care to add to your case? Um, I'd just like to build a bigger, um, build a, build a bigger garage than the 30 by 30. The, um, I've got a couple boats, and then I do work on cars, and I will need to have <clears throat> snow removal. It's, it's a long lane that goes back there. I'll need to have some snow removal equipment back there and riding lawnmower, um, just additional space in there to, to keep my upkeep. And so, just want to clarify, you live on Adirondack, and this is a Present rental? Presently, we'll, we'll Oh, okay. We'll be moving to that. This will be your personal residence? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I did want to clarify, we have uh, three conditions. Uh, one is that the appellant would uh, secure the required permits and approvals. Um, they would be required to combine the three parcels. There's three separate parcels into one. Uh, tax parcel and zoning lot and the last condition would be the structure shall be limited to accessory residential use only clarifying not for business use or rented occupied separately from those occupying the primary structure or dwelling and your you understand those conditions and are fine with that oh yes sir. yeah so when you work on cars it's for your own personal yeah, yeah, just, yeah, okay. yeah my own. any other questions from the board What's the size of the other garages in the area? Are any of them bigger than the one you want? There really, there really isn't any. No, they're. I think they're probably all smaller than thirty by thirty. But it, you'd have to kind of see the lot, I guess. Maybe but you can kind of tell from that. But behind is industrial. To the side of it is railroad tracks, and then there's a um, drainway in front of it. Like the neighbors are a long way away from. It wouldn't be an eyesore. I mean, it'd actually be a. The railroad tracks are on the, at least as you look at the screen yep. on the right side. Yep. Yep. And the south of on that picture, is that uh, Apache? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Are there any objectors present? There are none. And it, in Vern, you may have said, but the proposed design of the of the separate structure, the materials are different. How? I would I would leave that to the applicant to uh, okay identify what type of materials they'd be using. It would be metal siding okay. um, and metal roof. It also right now the house is like kind of a blue. It's got a blue color on it and I'm going to repaint the house to a gray and then I'll do a charcoal roof a metal charcoal roof and make it match the make it match the house it'll look nice <laughs> Mr. Chairman I would move uh, the variant 024455-20117 be granted subject to the uh, conditions uh, that are stated uh, because of unique circumstances. Now the conditions, Vern, are those the one, two, three, four? Yeah, there's there's actually three conditions. Three conditions, subject to the three conditions of uh, all the permits be obtained, uh, a uh, final certificate of occupancy, where the three parcels have to be combined. I, fi I filed for that. And yep. uh, the structure will be limited to residential use only. Yep. Um, the one thing that was is 50 by 56. I don't know if that makes a huge difference or not, but it's 50, that's what the 
the builder said it was the yeah that's what that's what we stated oh i think it's 55 yeah. 55 no okay no second Dip motion in a second any further discussion seeing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign motion carries and you can follow up with uh building services on next steps thanks for your time you're welcome thank you next all right the last item on the agenda is uh, a variance uh, this is very uh, variance var-024473-2017 uh, this is for property at uh, 203 uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, 20 25th street drive southeast uh, this is consideration of a variance request for reduced corner side yard setback for a new four foot high uh, fence picket style in the uh, R3 single uh, single family residence zoning district as requested by Pat and Stacy McDonald. McDonald. This is the location of the property. Uh, this is First Avenue, Second Avenue, just to the south is Washington High School. Uh, as I mentioned, the property is R2. Uh, they're looking at uh, a four foot in the application. Uh, I have it wrong here, but it's a picket fence. Uh, there's an existing picket fence in pretty much a similar location. Uh, that would have been considered a legal non-conforming fence because we don't typically in a corner side yard in, in the uh, front 25 foot setback allow anything over three feet in height. This is an irregular shaped lot on a corner. Uh, we did have traffic engineering take a look at this and they didn't have any issues and concerns as far as any kind of uh, the, the fence being any kind of a visual or safety, uh, visual obstruction or safety issue. Here's the uh, up close uh, aerial. Basically the existing fence uh, comes out from the house down along the property line and then back over to the driveway. Uh, you can see there's a lot of plantings, uh, landscaping. You can kind of see the fence back here. And then this is along the side street where the fence goes back down towards the driveway and the garage. Uh, there's also quite an elevation change. Uh, so um, if there's any kind of a visual obstruction, it's the grades that would create that more than a fence. And then this is the site plan submitted showing the location of the proposed new fence. It, as I mentioned, it had come out from the house along the side lot line and then over to the driveway. Uh, we've not received any complaints uh, or any concerned uh, uh, neighbors. Uh, and with that, I'd turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. Is the applicant present? If you could come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. Pat McDowell, 203 25th Street Drive Southeast. And what would you care to add to the case uh, the only thing I would add to it the original fence to my understanding was put up in 95 I purchased the property in 06 and even though I was out of compliance uh, we are pet owners so I would like to maintain a fence to keep the dog just small dog in the yard uh, as you noticed in the pictures on the house side of the fence it's landscaping stone on the other side, there's a bunch of planting. So if I had to move the fence, I'd have to tear out my patio stone and put in a bunch of new plantings to keep the aesthetics. Uh, all I'm looking to do is replace the existing fence with a, a new fence in the exact same location that's been there for the last 21 years. Thank you. Any questions from the board? And the fence just in the same place? In other words, you're not going closer to the street or? Nope, putting everything back as is. Uh, just want to maintain the aesthetics and the, the same look we've had for years. The difference is uh, it's, the, it's a wood fence now that is rotted. I'm putting up a plastic vinyl with the wood grain look. Uh, that's the only difference. Um, I think this is probably a staff question because we see a lot of these three to four foot. Is this one of the proposed maybe changes we're thinking about and changing? Yeah, we've talked with the consultants about that, and they'll be looking at that to maybe uh, bump that up, or maybe even depending on whether it's a solid fence or something that, you know, like a chain link or something, the, the regulations may differ too. 
uh, typically a chain link fence if it's out in the visual corner clearance area it's not going to create a visual obstruction but if it's a solid screen fence then we may want to keep it lower but okay. they're looking at that and they'll uh, give us some recommendations on how to change that because we do get a lot of those variances mm -hmm. and anytime you get a lot of variances you should be looking at maybe you know changing your code maybe yeah thank you Look, the way our lot sits there is zero obstruction to traffic we're up high yeah are there any objectors present there are none any other discussion comments questions Mr. Chairman, I move to approve variance number 024473-2017, uh, citing unique circumstances. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You can follow up with the Building Services Department. Thank you very yep. much. Thank you. And that's any all we have. I know it's not really a business item, but I just want to make a record for thanking Nancy Lee Zizi for her years of dedicated service on this board and many others in this city and beyond. All right. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thanks, Thank you.